If you watch this channel enough, you're going to know that I spend a lot of time talking about how great it is to live in the Metro Detroit area. So I figured let's switch things up a little bit today. Talk about the five worst aspects about living in Metro Detroit. Let's get into it. How you doing guys? Derek Warenka here from M1 Realty. I'm the broker owner, founder of the company, and we've got an all-star team of agents. Whether you're looking to buy, sell, invest, rent, whatever you need, we've got you covered. A few weeks ago, I did a video about the top five things that make Metro Detroit an awesome place to live. So we're going to flip things around today and talk about the five most negative aspects about living in the Metro Detroit area. But before we get into that, if you could be so kind as to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and most importantly, share this out to anybody that you think would benefit from this content, I would greatly appreciate it. Because that gets me in front of people just like you who want to know a little bit more about what it's like to live in the Metro Detroit area. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Number five, the weather. Nobody moves to Metro Detroit because it's awesome weather. Uh, you know, the springtime's great, don't get me wrong, you know, after we've gone through a long, cold winter, it starts warming up, the birds are chirping, the sun's out, it's really nice, and fall is phenomenal in this area. I mean, it's a short, it doesn't last long enough, but while it lasts, it is amazing. A little crisp in the air, you know, the leaves are turning, it's beautiful, there's lots of stuff to do, everybody's in a great mood. Um, with that being said, right, the summertime, my God, is no joke sometimes. Just as an example, uh, beginning of June, I was out in Arizona for a work conference, and uh, the one, one of the days I was there, it was 106 degrees, and it was still more comfortable than it was today, uh, middle of July, 89 degrees with 85% humidity. It's pretty brutal when it gets hot here. I think people don't think about that enough when they think of Detroit, because we are pretty far north. But, you know, we are surrounded by water, so when it gets hot, it's not the heat, really, it's the humidity that is just uh, pretty brutal around here. But more importantly than that, the winter time. Obviously, it is cold, dark, dry, windy, you name it, uh, not pleasant, right? So, you know, around you know, that first snowfall of the year is magical and nice, and everybody goes out and enjoys it, and making snowmen, and having snowball fights, and all that good stuff. But fast forward about three, four, five weeks when it's just unrelentingly cold. You know, you're in the middle of January, middle of February, no end in sight to the cold. I mean, it, it takes a certain kind of mentality to deal with the winter here in Michigan. And for me personally, I think the, the worst part about the winter time is the unrelenting gray. It's just gray every single day. Like you could go a month without seeing the sun, literally. And it's just nonstop. Everything, the sky, the snow, everything is just gray for weeks at a time. And on those rare occasions where the sun pops out, it almost doesn't matter because then it's dark by five o'clock in the afternoon. So just keeping it real, lots of good reasons to live here. The weather's not really on my list of one of them. Number four, the cost of living. Now I get it, compared to a lot of other places around the country, our cost of living is substantially lower, it's pretty reasonable, but that being said, everything's been going up around the country and Metro Detroit is no exception at all, especially, you know, at least from my line of work, I look at the housing market and the average sale price and the average rental rates are kind of through the roof lately. In fact, just in the past two years, from June of 2020 till June of 2022, the average sale price for the Metro Detroit area is up 20%. And that's for home sales. And the rental market's even crazier because if you're lucky enough to even find a rental property, the average rental rate's up 24%. It's gone from 1,600 a month on average uh, two years ago to 2,100 a month on average now. And number three, kind of just along those lines as the last example, is just lack of inventory of homes here. It's hard to find a home to buy. Case in point, so looking uh, at the long-term trend, so back in May of 2006, so that's before the Great Recession, before everything went haywire and the whole economy imploded and went crazy. Um, at that point in time, across the Metro Detroit area, so Oakland, Macomb, and Wayne, for whatever reason, they include Livingston County as well, but the average uh, amount of inventory on the market that month was 99,000 homes. So May of 06, 99,000 homes. 
May of 2022, a whopping 6,700 homes on the market. That's it across four counties. So when you hear stories from people saying, you know, I looked for six months trying to buy a house and I wrote 20 offers, you know, I went $30,000 over asking price and still didn't get the house. That's why there's just not enough houses to put people in. And in a normal market, a good chunk of that inventory would be supplied by home builders. And they're just not building at the rate that they need to be or they, they should be to actually give us the inventory that we need to put everybody that wants a house into one right now. Now that there's not homes being built, but like the, the infill homes are few and far between right now. And there are new construction subdivisions going in, but they're typically in the outskirts of the metro area. So, you know, you look at like Macomb Township, Shelby Township, um, Chesterfield, you're gonna see some new construction, Orion Township and Lake Orion, uh, and then, you know, down, you know, Plymouth, Canton, uh, Superior Township, Van Buren Township, you're gonna see, that's where most of our new construction's happening right now. And, you know, that's, and there, you know, that's number one, pretty far away from the middle of the city. And number two, there's just not enough of it. Not to mention that the, what they are building right now is pretty unaffordable for like a first time buyer. So um, until we get a handle on the inventory, I think we can expect housing prices to keep going up. So, you know, I'm gonna make, probably my next video is gonna be strictly about this uh, exact scenario about how institutional buyers are buying up a lot of our inventory. And that's really, part of this is because of the Great Recession. So houses were so cheap and they were so plentiful that a lot of investors bought those houses up that normally would be turned over in a normal market and just other people would buy them. But they got foreclosed on, they were getting sold for dirt cheap, so people were picking up you know, hundreds of houses and those aren't gonna be seeing the market anytime soon. So they're strictly gonna be rental properties for the foreseeable future. Um, I'm not really sure where the inventory is gonna come from. So suffice it to say, just for the purposes of this video, uh, we're lacking enough inventory right now to put everybody that wants a house into one in the location that they wanna be in. So that's definitely a downside right now to living in the metro area. Number two, so the elephant in the room, it's Detroit. Let's talk about crime for a minute, right? So Detroit's making strides. It's not like number one in murder rate anymore. It's not like the most dangerous major city in the United States anymore. That being said, our crime index number is three meaning that the city of Detroit is safer than 3% of other cities in the United States. So we got a little work to do, um, but hey, we're number six in uh, violent crime as opposed to other major metropolitan areas now. We're not number one. Uh, it's not great, but that strictly for the city of Detroit itself, uh, the crime rate is 2,179 violent crimes per 100,000 people, which uh, is definitely higher than you'd want it to be. Um, it is what it is. That being said, some of the most safe neighborhoods in the entire metro area are located in the city of Detroit. Some of the most unsafe areas in the metro area are in the suburbs. So, uh, you know, just a matter of just doing your research and not putting yourself in a position where you're going to be uh, a victim of crime. I mean, personally, I've lived almost my entire life in Metro Detroit. Most of the people that I know, all my family, same deal. Everybody's lived here their whole lives. I definitely don't feel unsafe walking around uh, anywhere in the metro area. Uh, but again, I am, you know, as, as street smart as I can. I'm not going to put myself into a position where uh, I'm going to let myself become a victim of crime. You know, it's uh, if I if I if I feel I listen to my instincts. You know, personally. If I'm not feeling safe and secure in an area, I get out. So um, that being said, you know, everybody has to just use their best judgment, do what you feel comfortable with. But just, you know, it's one of those things, you know, Detroit, I think is an unfair connotation about crime. Like, you know, you're not going to go in, you know, downtown Detroit on a Saturday night and have bullets whizzing by. It just, you know, it, it, it's... You know, it's the perception, but it's not the reality. So, um, you know, some of the safest places in the country are, you know, certain suburban areas here in, in Detroit, certain neighborhoods in the city. So it's all relative. It's all a matter of just, um, you know, exercising your best judgment, exercising caution, and making sure that you feel safe personally in any situation that you're in while you're here in Detroit. And before we get to number one, if you would be so kind again as to like this video, subscribe to this channel, most importantly, share this video out to anybody that you think would benefit from it, I would greatly appreciate it. Again, that just keeps me in front of people just like you 
who want informative, uh, original content regarding Metro Detroit and the housing market in Metro Detroit. So this is my list, right? This is just my opinion. But for me, the number one negative thing about living in the Metro Detroit area is lack of public transportation. Sure, we've got the people mover that goes in what, a little two mile loop around downtown and it's been there for 40 years and nobody really uses it. It's more of a novelty than anything else. And we've got the Q line, which is a great concept. That's a you know streetcar service that goes from right at the at the foot of downtown, right by Hart Plaza, all the way up to New Center, about three miles. But let's be realistic, an old lady in a walker can get up and down Woodward faster than that thing can. So let's break it down, right? So in a metropolitan area that's 3,888 square miles, that consists of 4.3 million people, and in a city itself that you could fit Boston, San Francisco, and Manhattan inside the city limits with room to spare, we've got four miles of public transportation that's not buses, not so great. And I don't wanna take anything away from the bus system, which is pretty extensive and it's reliable. Um, but that being said, I've got a bus stop right outside of my office and I'll see people sitting there for a half hour, 40 minutes, 45 minutes waiting on a bus. And I mean, to me, reliable, fast, efficient, relatively inexpensive public transportation, you should be able to like, get on it get where you need to go and 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 get there quickly and and cheaply for not a whole lot of money um not be sitting there you know for 45 minutes just waiting for your ride and you know we're the motor city so that's why that is obviously one of the main impediments behind having you know a subway or some kind of you know rail service that's extensive and gets you where you need to go all over the metro area is because the auto companies don't want that. They want people buying cars and getting where they need to go. Unfortunately, not everybody's in a position to buy a car and pay for insurance, pay for gas, you know, you name it, be healthy enough to drive, whatever the case may be. To me, that's one of the main detriments of living in this area. You know, when you look at all these other cities that have, you know, extensive public transportation, that's, you know, just quick and cheap and gets you around where you need to be. Not to mention that it's, you know, environmentally conscious to do that. Uh, we just don't have that here. So, you know, I travel all over the country. I've traveled all over the world, been in many countries, many, you know, major cities, you name it. And, you know, to me, that's like the one thing that we're lacking that, that many other cities have. Like, we've got a lot of stuff that other cities don't have that makes us a really cool place to be. But it'd be sweet if you could just like, if I could walk down to, to from, from my office, if I could walk 10 feet to the corner of Nine Mile and Woodward, hop on a subway train or something like that and get to Ann Arbor in 40 minutes for two dollars that would be awesome but it's just not the reality that we have here so that's my list I would love to hear what your opinion is and if you want to just drop a comment down below I'd love to to hear what your thoughts are on it love to respond and if you guys do have any questions whatsoever my direct line as always is 586-491 5622 you can always email me at dwarenka at m1realty.net or like I said, just drop a comment down below and we'll respond to that as well. And until next week, thank you so much for watching this, guys. I really appreciate it. And we'll talk soon. Have a great day.